Um, sorry I'm a few days late on this. We have had hashtag all the sickness in the house. I haven't really slept in three days, so I apologize. For everyone doing three days at the fair, I was supposed to get this to you already. I know you've seen the file. Uh, what you don't have <coughs> is an explanation of how to use it. So I want to be really clear. We are in week one of your training. All right. So next week, um, week two, we're going to make some changes. Okay. So in week two, two big changes are going to happen. We are replacing one strength series. We are replacing big time squish with crunch squish, which is the series I'm about to show you. You've also received my instruction that all, like your warm ups are now longer. Okay. We're not finished yet. Next week is week two. I'm, uh, I sent you a file called Ultra Plyo. Okay. How you're going to use that file. Um, you're going to, at the, at week two, you're going to perform the Ultra Plyo series at the end of every run. Okay. Uh, week three, and while doing them at the end of the, every run, like we're just going to, we're just going to start out with um, one, two punch. You know what that is. All right. Then the next three, we've got jump rope, jump squats, bunny hops. You are going to be doing those for, uh, you're going to start introducing those, at least the one-two punch, and then the others if you can, for 10 to 15 seconds each at the end of your run in week two, okay? In week three, it goes up to 30 seconds each. So, and the 30 seconds, remember, that's for jump rope, jump squats, bunny hops, one-two punch takes longer. You know that, okay? So that 30 seconds, one minute, Susan does not ever apply to one-two punch. You do one-two punch, it takes the time it takes. And then, in week three, only at the end of the run, you do ultra plyo for 30 seconds each. In week four, we go still at the end of every run. We're upping it to one minute each, okay? And then in week five, ultra plyo comes after all the other warm-up drills. So all seven minutes of warm-up drills you're doing now will then go up to roughly... 12 minutes total, roughly, give or take a few. Again, don't stress out over it. Just start making room for a longer than usual warm up. This does not count into your run time. You will be, by tw after 12 minutes of every all of this, you will be warm by the time your run starts. Still ease into it, ease out of it. But this is why we don't, the concept of warm up and cool down is completely out the window with where you are now in your training. Does that make sense? Ease into the run, but when you do, I think you'll find you'll ease into it a whole lot faster because you're going to be starting every single one with warm joints, lubricated joints. Ugh, I hate how that sounds. We need a new word. Um, and with muscles that are ready to go. So the way that I do this and the way that I present it, I'm, I'm, it seems like no matter what I do, there are a whole lots of questions. So I'm, I'm going to try to streamline it with only mentioning the changes. Okay. So the file... The picture that says ultra plyo one two punch just takes all the time that it takes and then at the bottom you see in italics so week two we're going to introduce ultra plyo at the end of every run um i can go back and amend that to be like 10 seconds each i just want you to get used to the motions and adding them in and give because we're still fresh off that last race i want to give your joints a little more time to adapt okay then week three the only change we make is we up it to 30 seconds from 50, from 10. Week four, the only change we make is we up it to one minute from 30 seconds. And then in week five, the only change we make is we add this all one minute of it to the beginning of your workout as well. So you'll be doing um, the drills, then ultra plyo, then your workout, and then ultra plyo again at the end of the workout. We'll revisit all of this in the taper because it will change again, okay? But for now, from week five until I tell you to stop, this is how it looks. Any questions on that, and I know there will be, <laughs> let me know. Let, let, also, let me know how I can make it clear, okay? So, before I've completely overwhelmed you, that you just think of these as little puzzle pieces that we're sliding in. We are moving away from 
doing strength all day long, right? We built all the muscle we need to build now. It's going to be a matter of making sure that um, your the synapses are firing the way that we want them to fire, that your fast twitch muscles are, are here for the game, and that all the supporting players, uh, all those little muscles in your side and your back, they're all coordinated and, and working, uh, making that concert, working in concert the way that we want. So, for now, all those warm-up drills, next week we start adding in ultra plyo. Also, next week, we are switching out your squish series, okay? So, you're in squish series two, big time squish. You're going to get rid of that completely and add in squish series three, crunch squish, which I'm about to demonstrate. I do not care when you do it. Two sets is great. Three is better if you have the time. Okay. And we're going to build from there. So week two, we're just going to be finding more room for all the stuff that's coming your way because you're, you, I'm going to gradually put it all in so that you're not totally overwhelmed by the time we get to week five. Okay. If there are questions, let me know. But go ahead and pull up your file. Hopefully you have it. Sorry I didn't give you guys more of a heads up coming in. But this is Squish Series number three crunch squish so half the reason we can't do this at the office anymore is because it won't fit I want you to find that little area right under your bra strap at the base of, of your shoulder blades that is where the ball is gonna go against the ground not too high not too low roll around until it feels like you're doing a chest opener it should feel really nice from there, put your hands at the base of your skull, lightly touching with your fingertips. That's, that's kind of what it looks like. I don't want you cupping and I don't want you curling your neck forward too much. I just want you supporting your neck in this position. Lean all the way back. Curl forward. And here's what I care about in that curl, that you're knitting your ribs together. And you're just going to press the ball into the ground and try to exhale and draw your belly button into your spine. Feet on the floor, nice and comfy. Hold that. Okay, so that's what hold. Kind of like hollow rock hold, only with your knees bent and squish ball under your shoulder blades. Don't, try, don't get crazy trying to curl because I don't want you to hurt your neck. I want, it's more important that your chest is open and your neck is supported than you're like curling forward like that, right? I want your chest wide and open. And if the way you do this is with your arms to the side, that's fine too. For me personally, I like to have my neck supported. But once you've got the hang of it, or if you just want to check your form, it's okay to put your arms out like that, but you'll find it's definitely more work for your lats. And the temptation is when you reach out, the temptation is to do that with your belly. And that's not what we want. We want it drawn in and flat as much as possible. This series is designed to get your TVA connected with your obliques and all of the little abs up top once more. What we've been doing has been isolating the top and bringing it together and not really drawing in the TVA. Now with this series, we're making the top part of your abs and the bottom part of your abs talk to each other. Okay, so we do that. So the first move is just hold. You'll know you're nailing it because when you're doing it correctly, when you're holding correctly, if each breath feels really aggressive, then big exhale, crunch to the left. Exhale before you come forward. That makes sure that's a, make that a habit, make that a practice. Exhale, twist. Remember, we're not going for more crunches, we're going for better crunches. And the best crunch is with all of the air out of your lungs, pressing that ball into the ground, chest wide open, turning it to the side, turning to the left. Then turning to the right. You should feel that all up in here. And the next one, toe taps. Tap, tap, tap. 
tap. Notice how both of my toes are pointed, right? Leave one on the ground, just gently skimming for balance. Tap, 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 tap. Time those exhales with the tap. This is a breathing exercise as much as it is a crunch. Crunches always have been. I'm just really emphasizing it. If you're not thinking about the breathing, you're probably not doing this correctly. If you can go quickly, you're probably not doing this correctly. Okay. And then the final one, going to add the twist to the taps. Okay, so two sets of that every day um, in week two and week three. We'll check in again at the end of week three because this is about 10 minutes of very, very targeted, not just ab work, but ab cage coordination work. This is like going to work your back, your front, and this too. So keeping this open without hyperextending your back, just pulling your shoulders, keeping that Think of it as separating your collarbones, trying to like, almost like you're trying to stretch them away from each other when you stretch your arms. Don't like curl them forward, stretch them back. Okay, that's really what we need to be going for because what we're doing now, um, we are, with all of the drills, your, your body's just gonna need them. I've already heard the positive feedback from you guys saying, hey, I really like it, it is a time suck, but boy, I feel good when I run. And I'm like, uh-huh, <laughs> I know, it's great everything's warm. Um, so the, the plyo is where we get that artificially fast leg turnover. So when you think about speed development and all the elements that go into getting faster, it, there's a step-by-step -step process to make that happen. You can't just send anyone out onto the track and expect good things to happen, which is not to say you guys are still so unfit. I wouldn't put you on a track. You're strong enough. I'm not worried about you getting hurt doing track intervals. The question really comes from, are, are track intervals really going to translate into prowess at three days at the fair? And I just don't think they are. Um, and if someone wants to argue with me about that, fine. Go do their training program because we've only got 13 weeks, you guys, or 12. We got 12 weeks after this week to really, really get you ready for the roads. And all of this plyo is an easy way to adapt your joints. It's kind of a, not a, I wouldn't, I hate the word hack. Um, it's just what can we do more of that will have the most impact on the outcome and preparation level and the least opportunity and risk for being hurt. And that's where the plyo comes in. We're conditioning all of your joints to carry your body's weight on a road again. Okay. So this extra five minutes of plyo that will become <laughs> really 10 minutes of plyo realistically i'm at the beginning i mean it's actually going to be more than that with one two punch but you know that already i'm just trying not to scare you so you're having that at the beginning and the end of each run um is going to help us don't think of it as making up lost time it's just we could i could have you run more or i could have you do this and the plyo is the surest way to condition lubricate and protect your joints from here to a road and then get you strong enough in, in a way that will parlay into hopefully no, seeing something a little different and a little bit better when we move off the roads to get you ready for the Vermont 100. So that's where my head is at and the why. And Susan has a question. What did, did the extended warm up before my interval float run? It was warm, ready to go. <laughs> yes, you nailed it. Yes, you nailed it. So I'm not putting any of this in training peaks because, um, again, I don't, training peaks is going to overwhelm you and it's going to overwhelm me. Um, and then, and also like, these are so small that as long as you're doing them, I will see the results in your run. I don't need to see the red, the, the green box in training peaks. Um, it's the system. I, I get what I get what I need as long as you're doing the work. Um, I don't need you. If you want to enter these in training peaks, that is totally fine. But hear this. In a day where I'm slammed or I haven't slept in three nights and I'm super far behind on email, the way I go through my email is I look for anything that uh, I look at all of the training peaks emails that do not have a training log written in there and I just delete them. And sometimes 
I might delete something that has a comment but isn't a run if I have, say, 250 unread emails in my inbox like I do right now. So if I look over or if I miss something, do not hesitate to come back at me. It wasn't a problem with the question. I legit might not have seen it. Or I might have been like, I got a yesterday box everything, guys, and assume if it's really important, you'll come back with it. And, and maybe that's crappy, and I do I do apologize. I'm sorry. There's like there's so many moving parts right here um, that uh, I, I'm trying to make it as easy for me uh, and as easy for you as possible and minimize the opportunities to miscommunications. So do not ever hesitate to reach out in the unicorns thread. If I miss something, it's not weird. I do not see it as pushy um, and it does not bother me. If it is a really big problem for you, then I'm totally open to discussing it. Um, but I can't, I've been doing this for five years and training peaks. This is the most efficient way to do it um, on my end, because what I see in training peaks is very different from what you guys see, even my view. So like, um, I know it was really frustrating when you got this and it was like, okay, but what week am I in week two, three, four or five, I'm like, that's what my training peaks looks like. My training peaks doesn't have dates in it when I'm planning your workouts. It has week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, week six. And I have to keep moving the event and counting it out until I've got the date. Right. So I look at the event. That's why it's so important for you guys to put like your, your races and training peaks, because that when I take that and I copy it over to, to the planning mode, to coaching mode, that's the only way I know. It'll say like 13 weeks till race day. And I'm like, okay, great. So I start at week one and I put the event at week 13. And that's how um, I move things forward. So I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But um, just just know this. The coaching view in Training Peaks and the workout creation view is remarkably different than the finished product view. Um, and it is a little confusing and hard to reconcile. So I'm trying to do this um, as, as efficiently as possible. And also you guys are all on the same plan. You... I decided not to make the plan dynamic, which would be easy, right? Um, I have played with dynamic training plans in the past, and here's what that means. A dynamic plan it means if I make a change to one, it makes a change to everyone that's also on the plan, okay? So if I decide to add, say, like, you know what, I think we're done with Series 3, we're going to put in Series 4, I could do that if your plan was dynamic. Here's the downside, though. All of you want different rest days, so that makes it, that means I cannot put you on a dynamic plan because if your plan is dynamic, you can't move anything around even on a premium plan. Does that make sense? So there are trade-offs and this, so since I can't make your plans dynamic, since you're all, you know, have different rest days, this is the, the easiest way to kind of work with it all. Um, because I also reserve, I also don't want to have to go through. If let's say that I decide one week, uh, like I said, you, you guys are already ready for series four. I thought we would need two weeks of this. It turns out we only need one. Then that means I have to go into each of your training peaks and manually delete every single workout. I can't do delete only strength. I would have to delete every single workout in that week column, or I have to go through delete, 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 add, 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 add add for every single one of you. It's just really inefficient. And it's one of those stupid little things that, oh, I have to do that. I don't feel like doing that right now. That I would just put off for so long, it wouldn't, it wouldn't get done. So that is why I have decided to do this this way. Like, again, I'm open to a conversation if this is really problematic for you guys, or if it's just way too confusing to work with. I'll try to give you more of a heads up before I stream. But like I said, the last three days have been a real disaster. So um, I had a minute, dry hair, I could see I've had like five coffees and I'm kind of like starting to shake. Um, but I also had the baby on lockdown downstairs with my mom. So I wanted to take a minute to talk through these files, the upcoming changes, show you the form and give you some of the cues. And then um, hopefully this answers some of the questions that I would have started on Monday night. So um, the reason I do things the way that I do, it just puts a little bit of work onto your lap. I try to minimize the amount of confusion. And I'm also working on some graphics that'll make it really easy. Um, but I don't know if those are going to be ready in the next week or two, the way this week's going, God help me. Um, I wanted to have something nice for you this weekend, but I clearly am not going to have it yet. So there you go. Um, as we go, I'll, I'll be like, it's time to swap. Here's your new file for series four. This is how you execute it. But the general pattern that we're in now is where it's going to stay. Okay. 
the you're going to have about 10 minutes of strength to do six days a week. About 10. There's no good reason to increase it from here because we don't need to build muscle. We just need to get that fast leg turnover and the joint adaptation ready to take what you did at Rocky Raccoon and get you ready for the road. We also need to get you mentally ready for doing one thing continuously in one direction for a really long ass time and not lose your mind. So I am more focused on that part of the preparation and more muscle isn't really going to help in either area. So it's again, this is, this is what you have now is all you're going to, is really all you're going to need. Um, and I may add in a few more things later. Um, if we need to up the ante a little more aggressively, like, you know what, we're going to hold on to these kettlebells and we're going to do, we're going to pretend to jump rope with the kettlebells in your hand. That could come, but that's going to come later when it's like, how much further do I need to push the ankle adaptation needle before I set them out doing this next crazy workout? So there is a method to the madness. If it doesn't make sense all the time, feel free to ask questions. Um, but I know it's really hard to visualize what I'm looking at versus what you're looking at in training peaks at any given moment. Um, so there you go. You're, if there are any questions, now's a great time to throw them at me. Um, but other than that, Susan, I'm just pulling this up. Um, oh, hi. <laughs> sorry. I, yeah, sorry I didn't give you guys a heads up in there. I was just moving really quickly. Um, but yeah, other than that, if there are no questions, let me know. You're coached, you're loved, you're winning at life. Um, and I'm going to go make some more coffee since I don't really have time to take a nap before I go get the kids. I'm bringing them out. Yay! And sorry, this is also why I have kind of been like off the grid for the past couple days. Um, yeah, I wasn't thinking real clearly. And I'm like, if I respond to this or if I then I will know. So Tamara is asking me to do something in Training Peaks. I haven't responded to that yet, Tamara, because if I do, the notification goes away and I will forget. So the task is created um, and that change is likely to happen tomorrow um, when uh, I have my usual office work time. Problem is I got family members sitting and staying in my office right now and a husband that is home today and trying to lay claim to it so when I can go back and sit at my computer and use both of my big screens that everyone makes fun of until they have to work and then they were like oh, I want to use MK's desktop because she has this amazing like with three screens and I'm like go to your home this is my home go to your home so yep there's that I have to fight for the right to be in my office so I can't make a lot of changes to training peaks I need two big screens in order to do that to make sure that I'm not messing everything up um, that I'm working off the correct dates and data it's it's a process it's very easy to do it's just laborious so there you go and there you have it looking forward to the plier the shit works yeah it works yeah it works you guys are doing great the plyo is super helpful now Susan while I have you do you have any more did those instructions make sense do you have any more questions if they didn't, it's cool. Let me know. Um, because what I was doing before with like replace this with this and this with this seemed to be confusing. So I'm just trying to fewer words are better. Um, and you guys can share the files that you want, but if you're not paying to co to uh, work with me, then yay, you're going to have trouble deciding. And I do that intentionally, right? And like, I don't, if you, so if the, the files get into the hands of someone that hasn't paid for the program, they're only going to be marginally useful because you got to do the work. You'd have to be like, oh, this file looks interesting Then go find the YouTube or the stream um, and all the conversations about it. Um, so I'm, I'm again, I'm doing this to sort of put some skin in the game. You can't it's not going to be too easy to just take the free stuff and go replicate the plan that you guys or the program that you guys have paid a lot of money for. Um, that's that's that, too. So if, by limiting how clear my instructions are. In the written material I send you, most people are too lazy to go back and look and put, sew all these little pieces together. And for the few that are, man, if that time is, is less valuable than your money, God bless you. Things so I need to watch the beginning, write out, review with me. Okay, do that. Um, that's all I had to say about it. But um, have fun and for the love of God, practice these. Show me what you're doing. This is the final instruction. I want to see videos of all of you doing this in the private closed Facebook group. Coached in Love Strength exists for a reason. And that's so you guys have a private place to show me what you're doing. And I can be like, yes, that's correct. Or no, it is not. I cannot do 
the job that you're paying me to do if I don't have video evidence of what you're doing so I can make sure you're doing it correctly and getting what we need. I would hate to get to three days at fair and find out that like this part isn't speaking to this part or like what was up here initially in Susan that I circled in red that day has now migrated down here because we've been focusing on this so much that the TVA connection is gone now. Okay, so and that could happen. I just want to make sure that it doesn't. Again, not that it's dangerous. It just means when up here is pushing down too much, we might be creating pelvic floor dysfunction and I'd rather not do that. So if the if sex becomes painful, if urinating becomes painful, if it feels like things are going to fall out of your vagina when you poop, um, if things feel looser down there, please go see a pelvic floor PT immediately. Find out which muscle is the problem and tell me, because if you don't do that, I don't know which muscle is the problem. I literally, I can't correct anything that you're doing or adjust it accordingly. So, um, yeah, help me help you help me help you. Yeah. You know, I know, I know it's embarrassing and like, trust me, I get it. Like I don't like to be critiqued any more than anyone else does. Um, especially when there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to be doing something incorrectly at the same time by doing this, I can give you better cues. Like when I say knit your ribs together and you're like, I've been doing this for months and I still don't get it. Um, okay. That's good to know. I can, I pivot and try something different. Or when I say, you know, spread, spread your collarbones apart, like stretch your collarbones, like you're like a TheraBand. Um, if that's not a helpful cue, that's fine. But what tends to happen is people like try to draw their shoulders back. They end up arching their back instead of, instead of standing taller. So I would rather have taller than backward, right? I don't need shoulders rolling back and chest press forward. I just need it open, right? Not back, just open. So there you go. That's how these cues come into play. That's how I develop them is I see what works. I see what doesn't. And I try and try and try again until I come up with the thing that gets the result that we want. And I can't go through that process if I can't see what you're doing. So please video yourself at least once for me to critique. And then once you think you've mastered that thing that I told you to change, put it back up again from here till three days at the fair. I expect to be watching each of you at least twice a week performing some of the strength. I would also like to watch you do the plyo. Okay. And the reason at least once after you feel like you've kind of mastered it, I want to see it. Reason being I found I've recently heard, I well, not recently. It was a while ago. I, when I realized people weren't doing high knees fast enough, cause it's a, so I always said it in the past, it was a moving minute, right? Knowing that you can't do more than 10 seconds or maybe 15 without needing to stop and catch your breath and then go back to doing it again. So I want one moving minute in those high knees, but I, heard, I, I realized people were slowing down or they were going more slowly so they wouldn't have to stop. And that is the opposite of what I want. You are never going to do anything where I say this is a moving minute. You will probably never be fit enough to have one unbroken minute if you're executing that move correctly. And that's okay. That's not a failure on your part. Even an Olympic athlete can't do it. This is some serious cardio. So what we're doing is we're firing up the fast twitch muscles in that artificially fast leg turnover. And since we're not pulling your body, it's, it's effectively the same thing, the same reason I would put you out to do a track interval. I can get that from a high knee with way less chances of injury because you're not pulling your body forward. When we, when we take locomotion out of the equation, we can get the benefits. So this is why I'm like, if you really want to do speed work, you can go do speed work. I would much rather you just did some high knees because we get all of that neuromuscular um, connection, all of the synapses firing. We get all of the fast twitch muscles doing, getting the same benefits um, with zero risk, really, if you're executing it properly, of getting hurt. So that's what that's there for. Like, I want to do speed work while you're doing high knees. You are doing speed work. There you go. So that's why I know the reason why I roll my eyes when people in uh, my previous programs are like, I don't like this because there's no speed work. I'm like, there's speed, there's speed elements. What kind of, <laughs> you've got high knees and you got strides. What, what more do you think you need? And now you guys see how far we can go with threshold work, strides and high knees. It's really effing far. So thank you for staying with me. Uh, 
this far into the game. I'm really glad that this has been game changing for all of you. Um, I'm really glad you're enjoying it. And I am thrilled that we YOLO to 50K and are already ramping back up into 50 miler. And one more thing, Kate, um, in your, in, I did see your note this morning about how you really, you're kind of disappointed seeing your fitness level going down. And don't worry about that. That is a 42 day rolling average. So it's going to go back up again. It's just taking into account the fact that you tapered. And it's not that we lose fitness during the taper. It's your, I mean, your badass is building, but you don't worry about fitness as a raw number. It's not a measure or a score. It gives me how much, it, an idea of how much stress your body has been carrying, a cumulative stress load versus the stress load of what you've done today versus the cumulative stress you've been carrying for the past 42 days. So it's three numbers that I triangulate. It's no, there's nothing in training peaks that's one pure figure. So if you're looking at something and treating it like a number in the vacuum, like this number is going down, I'm like, you're looking at it wrong. Your fatigue number is also going down too. You guys are full, all of you are now fully recovered from the 50 mile and 50K race that y'all YOLO'd and decided to do at the last possible minute a few weeks ago. There's nothing weak about that. That's fucking, fan that's fucking amazing is what it is. So quit looking for things to make yourself feel bad about that. You're not losing fitness. Okay. You are, you have gained in so many ways. That is one number that means nothing when you actually put it into perspective with the other two figures um, that each workout generates. Each workout generates three numbers. I talked about this in an old fitness protection Google group document. You should have it somewhere in your email, Kate, unless you deleted a lot of them. Um, but each workout in Training Peaks generates three numbers, TSS, RTSS, and then the, the between the two is fatigue, right? So I'm tr those are the three data points I'm triangulating at all times. And there's no pure number that's fine, like a, a fitness score of 130 isn't necessarily better than a 61. The person with a fitness score of 130 isn't necessarily fitter or stronger or more prepared than the person with a fitness score of 60. It really isn't. It's more a measure of how many consistent days we've been doing things. And you guys have been super consistent. There's nothing that you missed. Okay. So if at any point there is a singular raw number that is sort of weirding you out, I promise you, you're looking at things incorrectly. Your fitness score is going to go back up again really soon, but I needed your fatigue score to come down as well. So we could get ready to start first doing all these extra things two conditioning your joints, three, keeping you out there longer and longer. Cause if I threw everything at you at once, again, the chances of you getting hurt would be pretty high. So, and I'd rather keep those to a minimum since Nobody really wants more hip surgery. Yay. So there's that. You're winning. Don't that, that, you know, sorry to, to do this here, but in case I get bitten by something or sucked into something when I go downstairs, that is my response to your email from today. And I, um, and I apologize for not getting your permission before doing this, but, um, yeah, that fitness score, it's, it's just, it's night and day. All the other numbers that are behind it are just night and day different than where you were. And we started working together. Three years ago, Kate, we've been working one-on-one -on -one for three years. Isn't that crazy? I love it. Um, but you are just a, you're a different person now. Everything about you is different. And that one number doesn't reflect how far you've come from here to then, right? My fitness score is a 61 because I spent a year in bed, right? You spent not quite a year in bed, but you had a long, a fairly long recovery. Short, really, for what happened and what you were managing. But you've come through perfectly. We've been building and building and building and you just YOLO to 50K with no injuries. You've had no slowdowns. You've had no setbacks. You haven't even been sick since we started this. This particular training cycle, like almost, almost a year ago. And that's where, what you need to focus on. Forget about the fitness score. Go back and look at how many unbroken, continuous days of training you've had with no setbacks no injuries. Maybe you've had a niggle here and there, but not like it was. And if you don't think so, go back and look at your training logs from 2016 and 2017. You were in a lot of pain. You were really fatigued. Things weren't working. And right now for you, a bad day is one number that's meaningless. Isn't as, isn't as big as it was the day before. And if that's your biggest complaint, man, we are winning at life. 
And I want you to have this in your head reminding you or at least every, all the other unicorns hearing this and reminding you when those days come. Because you know what? You're going to, that fitness number is going to decrease. You're going to lose fitness in the taper. But you're not losing preparation. You're just not tired. But you are coached and loved and winning at life. You had mentioned that I could do some runs on the trails. Can your mommy which runs? All right. So I need you doing um, the harder efforts on, um, so for now, we really need to keep you on the road three days a week and start increasing that. So your long runs are always on the road. Um, the day before your long run, right? That the, so the, your long run sandwich is now three days in a row, right? Uh, I think for you, it's Saturday, Sunday. No, you've got Mondays off. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So your Sunday run, which is, I think a recovery stride sandwich. Um, it's, it's, it's your shortest run of the week. That one can absolutely be done on a trail as long as the first two longer runs in the sandwich are done on the road. You may also, you have, Mon you have Monday off and then Tuesday's your next hard workout, Julie. So that hard workout, um, anything tempo or threshold level or higher, big girl pickups for now, I'm kind of fine you doing it on a trail. If you wake up and you're like, mm, I think I don't need to be on the road today, go with that instinct. Unless it's the long run, we really need to try to stay there if we can. Um, and if you're doing your long run on the road with a little path beside you that like made a dirt and every once in a while you need to get in the dirt to like relieve some of the stress on your joints and then get back on the road, that's fine too. Okay. So your Sunday run for sure. Um, your Wednesday run, which I believe is also an easy hour effort. Um, that one can be on uh, the trail as well. And if we could limit it to that for now, I would prefer it. Um, because once anything that's an insanity run absolutely has to be on the road. Um, and that's going to be increasing. So that's kind of where it is for, that's kind of where I stand for now. Um, next week, as we start adding in the plyo and the plyo gets more and more, um, your chance, your joints are going to be more and more adapted, but we don't need to get, we don't, we don't want to get too comfortable on the trails because again, this is a big, 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 long event. Um, on the road. So we need to have pretty much everything on the road by April. Between now and April, use your, use your best judgment. So I know that again, that's a word salad, but yep. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay. So do, was that, was that clear enough, Julie? So if you're a three day run sandwich is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and you have Tuesday off, then that Monday run, um, that 46 minute recovery straight sandwich that can be done on the trail. And then if Tuesday is your day off. Okay. Now I'm getting twisted. Okay. Now I'm getting twisted. I'm going to have to look at training to answer that. So let's, 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 let's do that. The, whatever the Monday run is when I ride it Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday are your hard runs. Thursday is your day off. Okay. Um, we have, Everybody has a different off day. So uh, the way that I write it, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and then the long run sandwich is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That third day in the long run sandwich, the shortest day, that one can always be on the trail. The Tuesday run after the Monday hard run, that one can always be done on a trail. Um, barring that, I wouldn't get too comfortable on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday runs doing those on a trail because those are going to become insanity runs. Um, and let's just go ahead and for now, so you don't feel deprived later, keep your harder, um, insanity, what will become an insanity run. Let's just go ahead and get used to doing those on the road. So, okay. Got it. Yay. All right. Awesome. So, okay. Any more questions? Are we coached and loved and Susan needs to go back and watch this from the beginning. Um, but I'm, I am around for a bit. If you need me, don't hesitate to call, but, um, I'm going to pick up my kids from school in an hour. And then my husband and I are going on a date. So um, I will not be around later tonight. Two week is way more than I expected, so I'll take it. Yep, two two week is totally fine. If if you have that available to you, um, I would I would say do it. Um, again, I just don't want you to burn out before we get to the fifty miler. Um, I really want that to be super fun for everyone involved. Um, and because the because going from roads to trail is so much easier then going from trail to road, as you're going to see. And that transition back, we won't have to do a fraction of this stuff because it'll be, um, you're going to slow down. It's going to be mentally tough. Or it's like, because it is more work to run on a trail than it is to run on a road. Um, at the same time, 
it's a totally different experience. So as long as um, we don't have to adapt as much or as quickly to get you ready for the Vermont 100. So um, it'll actually, that transition back, I think will be very easy and welcoming for you guys. So yeah, and yeah, you're going to be so strong. It's not even funny. Yeehaw. But remember, this is what it's all about. I do not forget. I want to see Crunch Squish in uh, the Coached and Loved Strength page. I want to see you going through the entire warm-up series, um, like from silly toes and turning sideways so that I can see you're not hyperextending and that your thigh is doing the work as you do the soldier marches. I want to see you, even though it's awkward and nerve-wracking, I really want to see you doing those Tennessee walking horse taps from the front and the side view. I want to see you doing the, le the hip swings that push inward with your leg. Okay, I want to just make sure that we're getting what we need. Um, and I can't, you know, I, I'm not going to put this out there for other people to look at and critique. It's just us. It's a safe space. That's why we have that Facebook group. So there's that, but please try to do that this weekend or next week before we really get going with it. Practice, play, show and tell. Like you don't have to do the full five minutes of it. If you just want to do like, I'm just going to do 10 seconds of each move and make sure that my form is correct. That's enough for now. Um, and then we'll up it as we go. So yay. That is your homework for this weekend. Two videos for coach MK, two separate ones so that we can keep all the comments clear. One of all the warm up drills, including the plyo. Um, you don't have to show me strides. I do want to see high knees. Um, and, um, and the big time squish. So do the squish separately from what will become your warm-up drill um, from start to finish. Okay, bye. That's all. Road is harder mentally for me. I'm so good. I get the, I totally get this hard. What you guys have chosen would be harder for anyone mentally. Jesus Christ. Yay! But you're all nuts already, so it's perfect.